Hello, welcome to this week's Hashtag Toe to Toe. I'm Andy Scott and I have been joined by Spencer the Knowledge Fearon and David Higgins, Joseph Parker's promoter. We have been sent some tweets, so I'm going to fire them off yeah, at you two. OK, number one, why did you decide to fight Dillian White instead of other easier options? That's from Aquasi Appia. Boxing is a risk return business. Fighting easier options, you could still lose anyway, you could get unlucky, you could get injured and you'll make less money. So why, why, why muck around? We're here to win the world title, we're here to unify. That goal has not changed and Dillian White is the quickest way back and the, co the commercial return offsets the risk. So, you know, we've never held back and we never will. OK, Spencer, I'll go to you with this one. Boxing news, no name. Uh, who do you think are the top five heavyweights in boxing today? Um, that's quite simple. I would say Anthony Joshua, um, Wilder, Pavetkin, um, Joseph Parker and Dylan White. Do you agree with that list? Look, he's an expert, so I'm going <laughs> to agree. That means a lot. Thank you very much. Was Tyson Fury in that list? Was Tyson Fury in the list? Not yet, because Tyson Fury needs to get back in some form of shape and show me something. But potentially Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight in the world. I've said this time and time again. But Tyson Fury's got to show me something. We, we never gauged anything from that last performance. So he's the... He's like the best heavyweight in the world in recess. He's got to come back and show us something, I reckon. OK, uh, Tom Armstrong is asking, uh, David, if Joseph gets the win, would he consider fighting Tyson Fury? The answer is yes. I mean, we've got history with the Furies. We, Joseph had a hard-fought win over Huey Fury. We've got good lines of communication with the camp there. Um, and I think Tyson, a fit Tyson Fury is a handful for anyone, so it's not a fight that we take for granted. It would be a tough fight. But he's such a character, he's good for the sport. And if it Tyson Fury, it would be a massive event because he just shoots from the lip. And so it would be a, a, a big global event, create a lot of revenue. And um, if Joe could beat him, that makes a statement because he's a, one of the best heavyweights around. How fun would that press conference be between David Higgins featuring Tyson Fury or Tyson Fury featuring David Higgins? Listen, I, I want to know why, what's your, you should have a nickname. What's your nickname? I don't have one. It should be Hurricane. They call me Higgo. Hurricane. Hurricane. Hurricane's very the good. Media, Hurricane. The media, a media headline once said Hurricane Higgins, yeah. Okay. I like that, I like that. Uh, Spencer, Henry Francis asks, what happens to both fighters if they lose? It depends on how they lose, I would say. It depends how they lose. If they both go out and give it what they got to give, a loss isn't a bad thing. Here, here's a guy that just recently lost his WBO world title in a unification bout, and now he's in a massive pay-per-view fight against Dylan White. And I know that it's, they think he's ain't no, he ain't no Muppet. He would have got him top dollar. You can see, look at that. He's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh. No, he, he's dead right. Like, Parker's, how many fighters, how many fighters coming off a loss end up on a global pay-per-view date that's sold out 0-2? with, a, with a, a decent remuneration. So you, you're dead right, um, it's about how you lose. And even though Joseph lost, there seemed to be a bit of respect going for the way he conducted himself outside the ring. And, and oh, he's very gentlemanly, he's very, very gentlemanly. Um, and you could see just by the turnout that he got today, the reception that he got today, that he's actually endeared to the fans. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be a great fight, no doubt. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. But I do know like, it's the manner of the loss and how you conduct yourself before and after what can give you leeway? Dylan White got, got stopped by Anthony Joshua. But what happened after that? He brushed himself off. And it's a man of the loss because he went out there and he, he wobbled Anthony Joshua in the second round. People say, hey. And then he's come back and he's come back and he's got that steady momentum. So it's how you lose. And I think these guys are both going to give it 100%. So there's not going to be no loser. I'm predicting fight of the year. I think it's a fight of the year candidate because of the styles. And because Joseph, his regret against Joshua, was not throwing the kitchen sink. This time, he's intent on throwing the kitchen sink and being swarming at a lot more punches. So they're going to clash in the middle of the ring. It could be a couple of knockdowns. It should be a good fight. I love this question from Lindsay. What would you do, David, if you had a billion dollars to spend on boxing like Eddie Hearn? Who would you be looking to sign? I'd, I'd ask three of the sanctioned bodies to name their price, pay them out and put them on non-compete clauses, clean them out, create one sanctioning body and then have one world champion and then boxing would be like 
as big as the NFL on a global scale, it'll be the biggest sport in history and the credibility and the TV viewers will go through the roof and it can be done with that sort of money. If you, had to, if you could grab one fighter that wasn't Joseph Parker, like no one's going to judge you on this, no one's going to say, why would you pick him? If you had a fan favourite fighter or a favourite fight of yours currently, who, I, who would you I grab? Promoting Tyson Fury would be a bit of fun. Oh, lovely. OK, great answer. Yeah. You two together on the same side would be great, yeah. Uh, who, who would you, if you could pick one fighter? If I could pick one fighter, um, <laughs> it would be Anthony Joshua. Right, yeah, just being real. It'll be. <laughs> but if the, if the question was, uh, if you had the money like Eddie, let's assume you've got Anthony Joshua, who else? You know what? There'd be quite a few. I, I really do like Errol Spence. I like um, Bud Crawford. I think he's fantastic. I think I would want to sign both of them just for them to fight each other. Um, there, there's, there's quite a few guys, quite a few guys that stand out for me. But I reckon maybe Lomachenko, you know, because he's, he, he's a wizard, maybe. But right now, after the, the performance that we saw on the weekend, Usyk will be my man because he can move up to heavyweight and, and challenge your guys. Last one to you, because I know you're busy. Uh, from Obot Ib Cruz, would you consider fighting Eddie Hearn for charity? I mean, it could be pay-per-view. Look, a welterweight can't fight a super heavyweight. <laughs> Which, which one's which? He's the, Eddie's the super heavy. He's looking a bit man breasty at the moment. He, he, if, if, he, if Eddie loses weight, I'll consider it. OK, look, I'm going to let you go. Thank you very much for joining us. I can see Dillian White's getting in the ring behind us. That was, that was David Higgins. He's gone. The hurricane. He's gone. He blew, he blew in here and he blew out of here. There he goes. Spencer, thank you very much. That's been happening. Wait, listen. We go to the big boy and the boxer that must see attraction. And lays him out. An absolute thriller. One of the most dramatic undercuts we've had in a long time. Right v Parker. Whoa. Saturday on Sky Sports Box Office. To order, see Channel 491, press the green button or go to skysports.com slash whiteparker. Sky Sports, feel it all.